I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to answer the question, how do I know if I'm ovulating? I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist helping people build families for over 15 years. And one of the most common questions that my patients ask me is, am I ovulating? You know, I want to know why I'm not getting pregnant and could it be that I'm not releasing eggs? So in this video, I want you to learn the multiple different ways that you can figure out whether or not you're ovulating. Because if you can time intercourse and time trying to conceive around the time of ovulation, you are going to improve your odds of getting pregnant on your own um, and really learn more about your cycle and how to optimize. First of all, I just want to remind you, and I've said this in a lot of my videos here, if you are having regular, predictable monthly menstrual cycles, then most likely you're ovulating. So the way the menstrual cycle works is for the first about two weeks of the cycle, the ovary is selecting an egg, maturing the egg, and in the middle of your cycle around day 14-ish, it ovulates. After ovulation, your ovaries make progesterone to kind of stabilize the uterine lining. And if you are not pregnant, your ovaries stop making progesterone or decrease the amount of progesterone and estrogen that's making. And that signals the release of the lining that you built up. That's how you get a period. So when my patients say, I have no idea when I'm, whether I have a regular cycle or um, I could bleed multiple times in a month, or I could go for three to six months without a period, most likely those patients are not ovulating. Um, but patients with regular, predictable, about monthly cycles, they are most likely ovulating. But still, it's nice to know when you're ovulating, because if you know around the time of ovulation, it can help you time intercourse and maximize your chances of success. So the ways that you can figure out if, if and when you're ovulating, there are physical signs, there are tests that you can do at home, and there are tests that you can do in the clinic. So we'll go over each of these. There's several physical signs of ovulation, but I want to focus on three. Number one is a change in cervical mucus. So cervical mucus changes in production amount and consistency throughout your cycle in response to estrogen. So around the time of ovulation, that is when your estrogen level is the highest and the cervical mucus will be the thinnest. You'll have more production of cervical mucus and people will describe it as the consistency of egg whites. So kind of that thin sort of stretchy cervical mucus and a little bit more mucus or discharge than in other times in the cycle. When you're not ovulating and you're in kind of a progesterone dominant state, the cervical mucus will be pretty thick and it won't be as stretchy. The second physical sign of ovulation can be something called middle schmerz. It's, it sounds funny, but it's a German word and it means middle pain. And it means pain or discomfort or an awareness in the middle of your menstrual cycle. And what's happening is at the time of ovulation, the egg actually gets released from the ovary. And with that, a little bit of the fluid, like the follicular fluid that's surrounding it also kind of comes out into the abdomen and pelvis. And some people feel this and it, it's, I'm not exactly sure if people are feeling like the ovary changing, what they're probably feeling is irritation from the follicular fluid that's kind of lining the pelvis and abdomen. And it's just this typically one-sided pain or discomfort or awareness in the middle of the cycle. I personally have never felt middle schmerz, but my patients describe it as just like, yep, I'm ovulating from the right side this month, or yep, I'm ovulating from the left. I'm just describing what other people have described to me. And again, never experienced it, but I do have patients that tell me it's like clockwork. The third physical sign of ovulation is not really physical, but it's an increased interest in intimacy. So as estrogen levels are getting high and peak, we become more interested in trying to have a baby. And so I think that's just absolutely fascinating. So it's all about peak estrogen and ovulation, the thinning of the cervical mucus, the middle schmerz is the actual physical release of the egg from the ovary. And then just this increased interest in intimacy. Not everyone is going to have all of these symptoms every single 
cycle. Um, but it's just nice to be aware of this and as you're paying attention to your cycle and tracking things, see if you're seeing that in yourself. What about tests that you can do at home? There's two main tests people use to figure out if they're ovulating um, that you th does not require coming to a clinic. The first is basal body temperature taking, and the second is ovulation predictor kits. So basal body temperature taking, this has been around for a very long time, and it's basically taking your temperature every single day and seeing a rise in your basal body temperature after ovulation. And it all comes back to the hormones. So when you start making progesterone, um, progesterone starts being secreted from the ovary after ovulation, your basal body temperature goes up by about a half a degree Fahrenheit or 0.3 degrees Celsius. The thing about basal body temperature is it's great and that you can do it in your own home. It doesn't require going to a clinic. It requires a digital thermometer. It's usually best. And the main things you have to remember to take your temperature every single morning before you get out of bed. Like as soon as you start moving around and doing what you need to do, your temperature goes up. So it's really got to be first thing in the morning before you get out of bed, keep your digital thermometer next to your nightstand and take your temperature before you get up. A lot of people will just use a paper chart and some people will use apps where they kind of check it. And it's something that you do for several months to learn about your cycle. And a big mistake that I see in people who are using basal body temperatures to watch their cycle is the assumption that they need to wait to have intercourse or try to conceive until they see that, that spike or that increase. But that's too late. So once you see that peak or that rise in the basal body temperature, you've already ovulated. The fertile window is about six days before ovulation. The egg is viable for about 12 to 24 hours. Sperm can be living in the reproductive tract for up to five days. And so you need to have intercourse about two or three times in that fertile window. And so the fertile window is the the six days before that rise happens. Okay. So that is a really common mistake I see people make. They're um, wanting to just kind of optimize and hold on to the sperm, get the best sample and wait until they sure that they ovulate and then have intercourse. Um, and I'm sure that it works sometimes, but that's really not ideal for timing. Basal body temperature taking is just learning about your cycle over time, looking back and sort of saying like, yeah, consistently I am seeing a peak in the middle of my cycle. That means I'm ovulating. It happens around cycle day 12 for me, or it happens around cycle day 14 for me. And then you can use that information and the next cycle, you can start having intercourse, you know, about six or uh, six days a week before you know that you're going to ovulate and you're going to be timing it right for you. Another thing that you can use your basal body temperature charting for is an early sign of pregnancy. So after ovulation, the ovaries are making progesterone. That hormone is what is elevating your basal body temperature. And if you are pregnant, the pregnancy will stimulate your ovaries to keep making progesterone. And so you'll see a steady basal body temperature. But if you see the temperature decrease, then you know you're probably gonna get your period in a couple of days. It's important to understand physiologically why people check their temperatures, what these peaks mean. And if you're doing your basal body temperature and it's just kind of all over the place, it's not helping you predict things, either you're not testing correctly, like you're, you accidentally forgot and you're doing it after you got out of bed or um, the thermometer is off, like there's lots of things, but it could be that you are not ovulating regularly. So if you're seeing inconsistencies or irregularities, or you're not seeing peaks, um, then that would be a great reason to see a doctor like me to help figure out if you're really ovulating or not. The second at home test that people can do are ovulation predictor kits. Now, these are little kits. They look like pregnancy tests. You can buy them in the drugstore near the pregnancy tests. Um, they're, but they're called ovulation predictor kits and, um, you pee on them. And if they're positive, that means that you are really close to ovulation. So this is testing for a hormone called luteinizing hormone or LH. And 
that hormone comes from the pituitary gland to signal ovulation. We're learning so much about the menstrual cycle. Isn't this great? So remember there's two phases of the menstrual cycle, kind of before ovulation and after ovulation. Before ovulation, um, the estrogen level is rising as that egg is maturing and getting ready to ovulate. When estrogen hits a peak threshold, that signals the pituitary gland to release LH to signal ovulation back in the ovary. Isn't the body amazing? So all of these things kind of make sense, right? Like it's all about when the egg is mature and about to release, there's high estrogen levels. The cervical mucus is thinning out. Um, the LH is coming out in order to signal ovulation. It just all is this amazing coordination. Honestly, it's amazing anybody has regular menstrual cycles. If you think about all of the communication that has to happen between the pituitary gland, the ovary, and the uterus, just amazing. So when you see that peak in your LH, you see that positive ovulation predictor kit, you know you are getting ready to ovulate. So the best way to use ovulation predictor kits, if you are actually trying to time intercourse or learn about your cycle, is you want to start checking them daily about a week before you think you're gonna ovulate because you do wanna have a, at least a couple of negative tests. And then when you see that positive test, you're like, okay, I know that this is real and ready. This is a change. And when you see that positive ovulation breaker kit, you know you're gonna ovulate about the next day. After that first peak, you ovulate about 24 to 36 hours later. And so, if you could only choose one day in your whole cycle to have intercourse, it would be on the day that you see your first positive ovulation breakthrough kit. Because remember, it's the egg that has the shorter time for fertilization. It's only viable for about 12 to 24 hours after ovulation, but the sperm can be swimming around and finding the egg for up to five days. So positive ovulation predictor kit, have intercourse, and then you know the sperm is there. You could absolutely have intercourse the next day or a couple of days later, but just that is how to use an ovulation predictor kit. So the difference between an ovulation predictor kit and basal body temperature is the change with an ovulation predictor kit is helping you time intercourse and time trying, whereas the change and the elevation in your basal body temperature is telling you, okay, I did ovulate but the basal body temperature is not great for timing intercourse like the ovulation predictor kits are. Now, ovulation predictor kits can be really frustrating. Sometimes they don't turn positive. Um, it could be a bum test. It could be a hydration issue. Um, in patients with PCOS, they often get really frustrated with ovulation predictor kits because people with PCOS have baseline high luteinizing hormone levels. And so they often get false positives Plus they often are not ovulating regularly. So it can just be really confusing. The other thing is I don't want people to wait, 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 wait for that positive ovulation predictor kit and then have intercourse because I don't want you to miss an opportunity. I want you to miss a cycle. So it's like great to be checking kind of before you think you're going to ovulate, but still have intercourse a couple of times that week. And then when you see the positive, then have intercourse again. So I just have had patients get really frustrated and they're like, the ovulation predictor kits are not turning positive. I must not be ovulating. And this is really frustrating because I'm waiting to see that confirmation before I try, because I want to optimize things. And then I sort of say, well, are you having regular predictable menstrual cycles, you know, about once a month, because you probably are ovulating. So let's focus on timing and figure out other ways to make sure you're ovulating, but maybe ovulation predictor kits are just not right for you. So I hope that's helpful. This is often so confusing. The last way to figure out if you're ovulating is to work with your clinic and do some tests that they can provide. This can include an ultrasound or a blood test for progesterone. So as the egg is getting recruited and maturing, it's developing in a follicle which is a collection of fluid in the, the ovary. And we can see in the middle of the cycle, the follicle is the biggest, it's usually about 18 to 20 millimeters. And after ovulation, the um, egg is released and then that fluid collection kind of collapses and turns into something called a corpus luteum that's actually making the progesterone. So ultrasound is not perfect and um, it's not the, a, a really perfect way of telling if you're ovulated or not, but you can look in the second half of someone's cycle and see what 
could possibly be a corpus luteum structure on the ovary. Um, it's even more um, convincing if you saw somebody in the earlier part of their cycle and you saw a dominant follicle on the right ovary and then later in the cycle sort of after when they thought that they ovulated you see in that same ovary a collapsed structure um, that's very convincing for ovulation um, but sometimes ultrasounds are confusing because there are times where people have actually ovulated an egg but it sort of still looks like there's a, a follicle there because it hasn't really collapsed yet so it's not perfect but it is one test that you can do with your clinic the other more definitive test is a blood test for progesterone. So remember your ovaries should not be making progesterone before ovulation and they should be making progesterone after ovulation. So if you check your progesterone level and what you think is the second half of your cycle and it's over three nanograms per milliliter, then you've ovulated. So let's recap. There's physical signs of ovulation. There's home testing that you can do, and then there's testing that you can do in the clinic. Physical signs of ovulation are a thinning of the cervical mucus and an increase in production. Uh, middle schmerz, or that one-sided discomfort or pain around the middle of your cycle. And the third is an increased interest in intimacy. At home tests for ovulation could be basal body temperature taking and ovulation predictor kits. And tests that you can do in the clinic are ultrasounds, looking at the ovaries, as well as blood tests for progesterone to see if you've ovulated. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Like this video if you learned something. Comment with questions that you have. Subscribe to this channel and stick around for more learning.